So please make some noise and help me welcome our amazing and indomitable festival queen, Tana Lesko. You know, when they said that they put out the directive that you had to wear a mask, <laughs> they didn't tell you how. <laughs> and when they said you had to stay six feet apart, didn't that really mean you had to have six feet of arch? <laughs> Am I not a masked? mandate. I'm available. Is this not a masquerade? I could go on. I won't. So, you know, it's so, okay, I mean, like, how much effusion can you listen to? But it is so fabulous being back here and seeing, if only partially, your faces, okay? The, the, the fact that this festival is going after so many years, 60 years, I mean, the Rolling Stones is a whole other ball game, but we're going for 60 years of, of eclectic, uh, ideas of what a moving picture could be. I mean, where on earth can you find a festival that will stimulate you, that will inspire you, that will frustrate you, that will annoy you, that will amuse you, that will bore you half to death <laughs> than in Ann Arbor? I mean, our flounder, George Manupelli, all he wanted was a place to show his films and maybe a few of his friends. So anyhow, to reward this particular moment, I don't know if you noticed, but a lot of people are wearing some oddly shaped chapeau. So I wanted to do something that would celebrate the, the years of the film festival. So I asked them to prepare a trove of old posters and postcards and, 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 and programs. And I came, I came on Sunday, Saturday afternoon and I had made 60 fabulous paper party hats to celebrate this particular event. And for those of you that were sartorially um, advanced enough to realize you had to get one of these hats, you now have a hat of mine in your possession for the rest of your life. And you have to hang it into your, in your house and remember that the festival is not just something that's once a year. It's a thing that goes on all throughout the year. There are interesting films, short films everywhere, but particularly for you to you know, celebrates the Ann Arbor Film Festival year after year after year. So, in this moment, I am asking you to uh, help me do that particular celebration. And it's going to be kind of like an Alan Capro happening kind of thing. Okay, yeah, good. Some people know who he was. Um, so, all of you, I'm just going to tell you what we're going to do, and then we're going to do it, okay? All of you that have the hats, I want you to put the hats on right now. I don't care what the people sitting behind you. You're going to put the hat on right now, and then you're going to take out your cell phone and turn that cell phone into the flashlight mode, okay? And then you're going to stand up, and then you're going to rotate that flashlight going this way and that way, like a giant Klieg light. And I'm gonna, the house lights are gonna go down, and I'm gonna look at you. You're all standing up, 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 up. And I'm looking out there, and I'm seeing 60 points of light, okay? 
Everybody standing, everybody standing. Now rotate that thing so you can, everybody can see those fabulous little, you know, chapeau that I created for you, rotating back and forth. And now, as a group, as a group, we're going to sing Happy Birthday, Dear Film Festival, okay? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Rotate those. Happy birthday, dear film festival. Happy birthday to you. Woo! <clears throat> and so another thing I'd like to sort of uh, interest the, you, the audience, in, in, in celebration of this rather remarkable moment. And I, you know, I see that there are a lot of people that I've seen over the years. I've been here since the third year of the festival, okay. <laughs> I know I look young for my rage, but really. Um, <laughs> Anyhow, but so there are a lot of old folks out there that have seen a lot, a lot of films, and I see there are a lot of newbies, and I, I celebrate that you folks have come, and I encourage you to see every single, every single night of the film festival. But in this moment, you know, there is something. Remember what it was when you started coming to the festival, that there was like one film, or maybe there was one filmmaker who excited your imagination in such a way that it, it that propelled you to keep coming back to this thing year after year after year. And, I, and, and, and for me, I realized it was, it was Standish Lauder and Necrology. It was a film that changed my life. And then there was also Morley Markson, who did the incredible film The Tragic Diary of Zero the Fool, which I would die happy if I could see again. Now, I'm going to ask you to tell me what film or what filmmaker, and Leslie's backstage, she's going to be writing this all down, and pretty soon we're going to have enough films or filmmakers to have like an audience curated program. Right, Leslie? Yes, right. So. I'm going to ask you to raise your hand if you have a film or a filmmaker and to take off your goddamn mask and shout it out loud and clear, and then you can put the mask back on. Okay, so are there, okay, right there. Jay Goldenblatt. Jay Goldenblatt, okay. Somebody else. Bruce Bailey. Bruce Bailey, you bet. Okay, right there. All right, Craig Baldwin's Tribulation Number 99. Okay. Quasi at the Quackadero. Fabulous. Okay, right over there. Yvonne Rayner. Yvonne Rayner. Fantastic. Okay, right here. Right over here. Okay. Yay! Richard Myers, Jungle Girl. Okay, over there. Anne Marie Fleming, you take care now. You take care now. That was a great one. Okay, who else? Pitt, Woo! Chick Grant, all of them. Chick, Br Chick Strand, all of them, right? Yeah. That was great. Yeah, take two. Okay. Okay. Anybody else? Okay, over there. Okay, okay, over there. Oh, Kurt McDowell, the great Kurt McDowell. Okay, in the back. Anybody in the back? One at a time in the back. Yes, yes, absolutely. One more time. <laughs> okay, thank you very much, and I know we've recorded all of that. You can talk to Leslie later on. 
So now comes the part where it's enough about you. Now it's all about me, okay? So I have noticed in the last couple of years that it has been scourge after scourge after discouraging word. First the pandemic and last the pandemic. And it seems as if every time I tune into the news or something or, or pay attention to stuff, there's something else coming up. And it's the pandemic. And then it was the previous administration, a person who I can't even let, let, let belittle my mouth. <laughs> and then there was the big lie. And then there was the pandemic. And then there was the ripping of the children away from the migrants, the poor migrants down at the border. And then there was the pandemic. And then there was the election and the big lie, and the pandemic, and then there was the insurrection, and the pandemic, and then there was the attack on voting rights and redistribution, and the pandemic, and then there was the attack on women's rights, abortion rights, and the pandemic. I can't even believe that we're going through this thing again. And then there's like the dissolution of truth and the, the, the rise of artifice and the belief in these like solipsistic bastards of billionaires. And every time you go into, into these cycles, it becomes the scourge, which is this, this giant snowball that keeps, a giant black snowball that keeps gathering bigger and bigger and bigger and rolling down this, this, this road down to like probably down to the depth of the hell until we finally get to the point where we're in the thrall, we're literally in the paw of a, of a deep deranged um, czar who, who's only a germophobic czar who's like feeding his ego so that and leveling him and possibly creating a, a worldwide disaster when, when we all thought it was just going to be like climate change. That would do it. But no, no, it's much worse than that. It's much worse than that indeed. And, and, and so this whole thing has been getting bigger and bigger and then all of a sudden it became quite local. I got a stomach ache. And, and, and it wasn't just any stomach ache, it was like every day I'd get the stomach ache and I had to lie around the house for a couple of hours every day while like, the stomach ache would go away. And I thought, man, is, is this psychosomatic? Have I just interiorized all of that stuff that was going on? And then I thought, well, maybe, no, maybe it's not. Maybe it's lactose intolerance. I can't do that. I'm a Taurus, no such thing. <laughs> and then I thought, well, maybe it's an ulcer, okay? Maybe it's an ulcer. And that seems legitimate, um, but then it didn't kind of go away. And so I thought, well, I'll go to a doctor. I'll go to a doctor and she'll give me a pill. And so I went to my doctor and she said, well, maybe I'm not the right doctor, so maybe you should go someplace else. And so suddenly, in the course of two days, I see four doctors and have an MCRI, and then a couple days later, I'm on the operating table, and the alacrity with which all this has happened, which only in the medical field happens, when things happen really fast, you think you're dying. And I thought I was dying. But they did this procedure, and they took something else, and then I recovered, and I said, okay, now I gotta think about the film festival. <laughs> and then they said, no, we didn't quite get it. And so they put me in another kind of like situation in the hospital. And then I'm really having to recover. And I thought, Jesus fucking Christ, you know, what am I gonna do? I can't like, I can't like, I can't leap about on the stage. I, I have to go festival like big 60th anniversary, blah, blah, blah. And, I, and I, hadn't, I didn't have it in me. And I said, well, maybe I should cancel. I've never canceled a gig in my life. And then I thought, well, should I stay? Should I go? And I thought of Gogo. And I thought of Gogo. And I thought, I can't go on. I'll go on. And, and then I also thought about the man who has 
been leading his country and the rest of the world through a moral rectitude that is formidable. A man who has become the Martin Luther King of our time. As, uh, as the world is being held hostage, as his country is being decimated, as his people are being decimated, and he is a man, he is a fool, he is a comedian, before the cannons goes the fool, and we're following, and we're following. And then I thought of the agency of artists, and of the, the Cuban artist, the Cuban performance artist, Tanya Bruguera, who has been jailed innumerable times because of the repressive government that's in Cuba, up until recently, much worse than in Russia constantly needling the government about what they're doing, about their repression of, of, of rights and, and jailing artists and journalists and musicians. And so during, when she was featured for the 2019th Biennale in Havana, a very big deal, she boycotted it. And then in 2021, she got other countries to boycott the Havana Biennale. And I realized artists have agency. And she had it. And she went to the government and said to them, I am willing to leave your country. It's not my country anymore if you're going to play at this game. I'm going to leave the country. But for that, you have to give me the release of political prisoners. And she got it. She got 25 people released and there was an entourage of three cars of policemen that drove her to the airport where she finally bid that country adieu. <laughs> Tanya Bruguera. So I thought, take the agency pad. I've been doing a lot of stuff about the, the climate change, but you know, I, I've also been sequestering all this stuff inside from all the stuff, like a, as we all have. And so, like, I thought, well, maybe I'm on the stage here. Maybe I'll just take this moment to let it all out. I'm going to let it all out, and you're going to help me. I, and, 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 and maybe I'll, I'll recover like faster and, and be better. And, and so I'm gonna, I'm, I'm, I, I need your help. I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna let it out and, and and, and, and we're gonna do it again. We're gonna do it again, only this time we're gonna do it a lot louder and we're gonna do it longer. And a one and a two and a three and ah! Well, that felt good. <laughs> it got rid of some bile, I'm sure. It's slightly cathartic. But the real thing is, is that you have to take responsibility for your actions, as we all know, as has been demonstrated. And so, I like to swim in the open waters. And every time I go to the beach, I take two giant contractor bags and I fill them, I do beach cleanup, and I fill them up with single-use water bottles, and I fill them up with straws, and I fill them up with those god-awful teeth flossers, and I fill them up with female hygiene suppositories, which used to be made out of cardboard, but now they're made out of plastic. And I fill these goddamn bags up, theoretically recycling. Well, that's bullshit. There is no recycling. In 10 years, there's going to be half of our ocean is going to be plastic and the other half is going to be water. So if you don't buy things, then there's no need for the things to be recycled. So I'm asking you at this moment, please, with thought, and oversight and, and preparation that you resolve, please resolve at least a few times not to buy single-use water bottles. And 
in addition to that, in addition to that, I would like you to support Ukraine in any way that you can. It's not those people, their land, and, the, and, and their problem. It's all of us. One person is all people. One child are all children. One land is all land. It's our freedom, it's everyone's freedom, and support it in any way you can. Thank you very much.